But first, more breaking news today. Russian President Vladimir Putin came out today and recognized the independence of separatist regions in eastern Ukraine, a move that will seriously ratchet up the tensions with the West. We're going to dig into that news a little bit more later. But first, as it is President's Day, we owe it to ourselves to talk about presidents, two of them specifically, Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin. And these two couldn't be more opposite. One a jackal. What he lacks in size, he makes up for in strength and cunning. Vladimir Putin strikes fear in most world leaders. He keeps them off balance, not knowing what he will do next. The other, Joe Biden, more like a manatee, seemingly in over his head, just trying to make it up as he goes along, floating from crisis to crisis, not smart enough to avoid the deadly blades of oncoming speedboat propellers. The reason this matters so much is because we're at a juncture, a crossroads, a precipice of sorts. We're watching the live transfer of American greatness as the most powerful nation on earth being willfully handed over to Russia and Vladimir Putin. We're watching a weak and feeble Joe Biden desperately trying to threaten the alpha male in the room into standing down on Ukrainian assaults. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing Joe Biden says or does will influence the decision Putin will ultimately make war or peace. This is Putin at his best, and it only highlights Joe Biden's woefully inadequate leadership skills. Do you honestly think the timing wasn't in Putin's forefront all along? Putin saw Biden failing miserably. Look no further than the disastrous and rushed withdrawal from Afghanistan. We now know we were right all along, right here, when we were calling out Biden, general humiliation, and the rest of the defense and state departments for their deadly mistakes. We saw it in real time. They denied it all. But we now know they were lost in the forest and bluffed their way out. And 13 Americans died. Those young men and women died because Biden and his crew were so incredibly incompetent. Follow that up with a border crisis. And then most recently, spiking prices for food, food and fuel. Food and fuel. And you'll have a very weakened American president. The man is on life support, not literally, but certainly when it comes to his presidency, with a ridiculously low approval rating in the 30s, Biden was ripe, a ripe target for Putin's finely honed arrows. You have to ask yourselves, why are we even getting involved in the Ukraine-Russia conflict anyway? What's in it for the U.S.? Aren't we tired of spending blood and treasure to protect other countries' interests? Of course we are. We have no dog in that fight. So why are we threatening Russia? I mean, why would we even want Ukraine in NATO anyway? What, so every time Putin feels frisky and lines the border with military assets, will that then have to defend Ukraine? Are we nuts? That's making the likelihood of a World War III way more real. Again, my two cents here as a libertarian, get out of the middle of this, Joe. You can't win. Putin has already won, no matter what he ultimately decides to do. Oil prices have skyrocketed and lined the Kremlin with a petro fortune. Russia pumps 11 million barrels of oil per day. And at the now $100 per barrel, thanks to the military exercises on the Ukraine border and cemented by Joe Biden's weak need presidency, Russia is taking in $1.1 billion per day. And since oil pumps 24-7, 365, that's a massive $400 billion into the Russian economy this year. Way to go, Joe. And Putin? He's probably laughing as he rides his horse shirtless or scores his 60 goals on the ice and shoots those Siberian tigers. Well, our guy, old Joe. Mr. President, what did you order? Chocolate, chocolate chip. <laughs> no comparison, folks. They got a jackal. We got a manatee. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon.